Let me start by saying that uh, I've been overwhelmed by the many interesting new results that I've seen of this uh, workshop. There have been a real extraordinary uh, series of results that we have seen. And also, I've been overwhelmed by the show of affection that I've seen from many of you. And as I said already on Tuesday night, I think that the human aspect of what we do in research is also very important extremely important to see that we are going on a journey, but we are going together, not as individual fighting one against the other, but rather trying to understand what is the, what is the uh, real uh, uh, truth and nature. So this has been a long journey that, uh, that uh, we have done together. So what I want to do here is not a summary talk, nor is a scientific talk, it's just a, a brief mention of some uh, aspects in this uh, journey. And uh, uh, I'll start by uh, saying that uh, it turns out that in nature there are uh, many uh, forms that uh, are uh, uh, symmetric, ordered. Here is an example of some uh, creatures that can be found in the uh, ocean and uh, they belong to a family, so-called Discoidea, which shows a very complicated uh, uh, structure, but structures which are uh, symmetric, have uh, a, a, a symmetry, geometric symmetry associated uh, with it. Now, order is uh, synonymous uh, with symmetry. Order, uh, the uh, word symmetry comes from the Greek. It means uh, well ordered, well organized, and uh, uh, all the uh, ancient civilization attempted to imitate uh, uh, various forms of, of uh, uh, nature in art. And so here are two uh, examples of uh, uh, one of uh, translation uh, symmetry, which is 4,000 years old, and one of uh, reflection ring symmetry, which is only 3,000 uh, years old, uh, and uh, taken from some uh, of some uh, uh, decorative uh, motifs uh, in, uh, in uh, Sumer, and uh, here uh, in uh, Greece, in the late Germanic period, as you can see the feature as uh, symmetric around the plane, perpendicular to the uh, transparency here goes to the middle. Although if you look very closely, you will see that the symmetry is slightly broken, is not an exact uh, uh, symmetry. <laughs> So then came the next step, which is how we describe symmetry. Here is the introduction of mathematics. Uh, and the fact the Greeks developed mathematics, uh, in particular geometry, through the regular polyhedra. Uh, and uh, it turns out that uh, many forms of nature display this uh, polyhedra uh, shapes. It's again taken from a book reporting uh, uh, on some, uh, on some uh, other uh, water uh, creatures here. Uh, and then uh, the regular polyhedra were associated with the constituents of the universe, as you know very well. Uh, the fire was associated with the tetrahedron, air with the octahedron, the earth with the cube, the water with the hypothesis, and the universe itself was associated with a very complicated uh, uh, polyhedra, which was the beta novetahedra. So now we come to the second aspect, which is the, the aesthetic connection. Uh, the Greek also thought that symmetry is associated with beauty. In fact, there is a statement in Polygratos that I mentioned last time that the symmetry uh, is, uh, is beautiful. Symmetros uh, colossesti. So, uh, and uh, this idea, this aesthetic connection, was very, taken very much at the beginning of the 20th century. A famous mathematician, Hermann Weyl, uh, uh, a German mathematician Weyl, um, in his book, in the little booklet that he wrote after he came to the United States uh, uh, in, uh, in the 19, uh, uh, in the 1930s, but uh, this was uh, written in 1950, associated the truth with uh, beauty and uh, with uh, symmetry. Uh, and uh, he showed as an example the human body, which has a bilateral symmetry, which is almost exact, but not precisely exact. 
So here is the aesthetic connection which was emphasized by Ruloff in organizing this and choosing the title beauty in, in, in physics. So the aesthetic connection was very popular with many people. Dirac was another one who very much emphasized aesthetic connection. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, Einstein was another one, someone mentioned that. So this was an idea which was, uh, which was very much used. So let me then, uh, uh, since beauty is related to symmetry, let me discuss some of the ways in which symmetries uh, uh, have been used in physics because they have been used in a variety of ways. So the first one, which comes from the symmetry map, is uh, geometric symmetry which uh, describes the arrangements of the constituent particles into a structure, for example, atoms in a molecule or in a crystal. And uh, the mathematical framework to describe that are the going groups. Here is a, a recent example of uh, the molecule uh, carbon 60, uh, fullerene, which has an icosahedral of symmetry and was discovered and to the Nobel Prize for Croto and uh, company. Second example is uh, permutation symmetry. Uh, this uh, symmetry describes the property of systems of identical particles. The mathematical framework is uh, the permutation group. It uh, became important uh, uh, with the development of quantum mechanics. And in fact, we've had the previous talk, which has previous talk about the symmetrization and anti-symmetrization of the wave functions of four bosons and fermions. Uh, here, uh, to show this type of symmetry, I've taken a picture of, from uh, Escher, uh, where you can see that uh, uh, the figure is symmetric at the interchange of the horsemen. In this case, the symmetry is even more complicated because you can also interchange either two, two white or two black horsemen, and also you can put it on a Morbius strip instead of putting it on a, on a, a plane. The third type of symmetry is the space time of fundamental symmetry, and uh, this is fixed in the form of the equation of motion. Uh, we, uh, uh, the mathematical framework is continually groups. An example is the Dirac equation, uh, which is implied under the group of Lorentz transformations, or in general under the Poincare group. And again, I have shown a picture of formation where if you look uh, uh, in the radial direction, you see that. Uh, the figure repeats itself, but smaller and smaller, and it's like the thinking of the contraction of, of, of space uh, as you increase the speed. This is an interesting problem in symmetry studies uh, because the tessellation of a uh, parabolic quantum plane is one of the famous problems in mathematics. Escher solved it without knowing the mathematics, and this is, it is amazing. I remember when I was in Groningen, where Escher was, uh, uh, previously, that this uh, intrigued me a lot. And, uh, unfortunately, when I arrived in Groningen, he had already passed away. Nonetheless, I was learning this uh, very much from him. Fourth type is gauge symmetry. This speaks of the form of the interaction between particles and the external fields. And the mathematical framework is uh, continuously groups. Again, uh, uh, for gauge symmetry, we have to look at what happens here because in addition to the free equation, we now have the extended field, and uh, the laws of energy dynamics are invariant that uh, you want gauge transformations, which are induced by changing A into A plus uh, the, the, the four gradient uh, for derivative of uh, lambda. One of, as you know, one of the major discoveries of the second part of the 20th century has been that all interactions strong, weak, and electromagnetic uh, all appear to be governed by gauge symmetries, which are SU3 or SU2, SU2 W and U1 for electromagnetism. So this has been one of the major discoveries, and the several Nobel Prizes have been given for this. The fifth example that I would like to mention is dynamic symmetries. Now this type of symmetry which fixes the interaction between constituent particles and external fields uh, and therefore determines the special properties of quantum systems, the quantum of energy levels, was actually originally introduced by implicitly by, by Power in 1926 for the hydrogen atom. Because it turns out that the Hamiltonian with Coulomb interaction is invariant under a set of transformations which is larger than rotations. So they are the so-called <coughs> two-the-length transformations already 
Runge lets uh, they determine this already in classical mechanics, in fact, uh, but uh, it was then used by Gauri in quantum mechanics. And uh, uh, it turns out that this Hamiltonian can be written, in the, which is this one, you know, obviously, can be written in this form in terms of the so called Casimir operators of the group and so forth. And then, uh, as a result of that, the energy levels can be given in explicit analytic form. And this is the famous Bohr formula, which can be very simply derived without solving any Schrodinger equation or anything, can be simply derived from uh, this observation of Pauli that uh, the Hamiltonian contains only the Casimir operator. And here is a, an experimental example of that spectrum of the hydrogen atom. On the left hand side, there is observed spectrum and on the right side the related spectrum. And apart from small relativistic corrections and so on and so forth, this uh, correspondence is very good. So the offer symmetry uh, 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 is present in the spectrum of hydrogen and experimentally verified. The next important step was uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, observation by Gelman and Eman in the 19, early 1960s of flavor symmetry. In, uh, again, the situation is the same. The mass operator for a particular system is written in terms of these Casimir operators of these invariants or the appropriate groups. And as a result, one is an energy formula or mass formula, as it is called here. And here is again an example, the spectrum of the barrier decoupled, which is shown as a, an example of experimental symmetry. You see also how well organized and organized the spectrum. There is no reason why it should be so, except for the symmetry. And uh, here, this is the observed spectrum, which has this uh, dynamic symmetries. Now, again, a major discovery of the second part of the 20th century has been that dynamic symmetries are pervasive in physics. And they are found at all scales. I briefly mentioned atomic physics uh, with the hydrogen atom, uh, atom physics uh, with, uh, with the, uh, the Gaman uh, 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 case, and here is also nuclear physics and molecular physics. And as you can see, the scales are very different, but nonetheless, uh, uh, dynamic symmetries are observed all over the place, in all of these fields. And I'm going to show two simple examples. One is atomic nuclei, uh, where um, uh, the interactive Boson model has a, an algebraic structure U6, and then the dynamic symmetries in this model are obtained by breaking U6 into its subalgebras. There are three cases here, and it turns out that all of these three dynamic symmetries have been observed. When uh, one of these symmetries occurs, the spectrum can be given in explicit analytic form, and here are the, the uh, energy formulas for the uh, uh, interactive Boson model. And here is uh, many of these examples have been found of all three symmetries, and I'm glad at least here to present this case of O6, which was found by Jolly, uh, Sisesky, and Kasten, and this <coughs> was at the time a very important result because it's an example of a dynamical symmetry uh, uh, which is uh, not trivial and uh, which is at the same level of accuracy of the dynamic symmetries of Gelman and Neyman. Second example is uh, molecules. Uh, so these are uh, uh, symmetry these molecules are treated in terms of this uh, uh, so-called Viper model, which has a black structure in four. And uh, here is an example of a dynamic symmetry molecule. This is spectrum of the hydrogen molecule, and uh, uh, treated in terms of uh, the SO4 symmetry. And uh, uh, there is a experimental spectrum and a theoretical spectrum, and you can see that it's uh, a quite a close correspondence between the two. So symmetries are now have been found, uh, dynamic symmetries have been found uh, in many uh, cases. I'm not going to discuss the dynamic symmetries in hadrons and, uh, and atoms, uh, but I will now proceed to a next uh, important concept. So, in the 1970s, uh, in, the, in an attempt to further unify uh, the laws of physics, a new concept was introduced called the supersymmetry. Uh, among others, there are Polkov uh, 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 and Akulov, uh, West and Zubino, Bruno West and uh, uh, Julius West and Bruno Zubino. And uh, the idea is the following: uh, permutation symmetry 
uh, 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 changes bosons uh, into uh, 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 bosons and fermions into fermions. So we have uh, discussed previously the case of system of bosons, like the interactive boson model, or system of fermions, like electrons in atoms or, or uh, uh, quarks in uh, hadrons. But uh, 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 in supersymmetry, there are symmetry operations that change bosons into bosons uh, and the fermions into fermions, but also uh, symmetry operations that change bosons into fermions. So supersymmetry is the symmetry operations which also change bosons into fermions and vice versa. And so these type of symmetries are appropriate for a mixed uh, system of bosons and fermions. It's hard to visualize the symmetry, so I'm taking here another picture from uh, Asia, where if you look closely, you see that there are pairs of fish, and there are individual fish. And so uh, here, the supersymmetry means that nothing happens to the Antonian system that you are uh, studying if you exchange a single fish with a pair of fishes. Now, the difficulty here is that the supersymmetry uh, means a new language, which is that of graded the algebraic groups, but also supersymmetry is used today in a variety of ways. So here are some of the ways in which supersymmetry is used. First of all, there are space-time uh, fundamental supersymmetries. These are a generalization of uh, what I'm Lorenz Poincaré invariance. So what we do is, in addition to the space-time coordinates and which are bosonic, we introduce a, a super space-time coordinates theta, which are fermionic, and they must be gas variables because these are anti-commuting uh, coordinates. And so we have transformations that now mix x and t with the theta, and uh, we therefore have uh, a possibility of new types of symmetries, and the mathematical framework for these is the super uh, group. Now, one of the consequences of supersymmetry is that to each particles that correspond to a super uh, partner, so the quark that corresponds to quarks and, and so on and so forth. And as you know, this is one of the most active areas of experimental uh, research at the moment at CERN LHC, where <coughs> they are looking for hints of uh, uh, supersymmetric particles in the uh, in their experiment. Second example of supersymmetry is gauge supersymmetry. Again, it's a generalization of what we did before for gauge symmetry. This fixes the form of the equation satisfied by the fields. And here's an example in so called Western mean or Lagrangian, where we have the Lagrangian of the bosons, the Lagrangian of the fermions, and the boson fermion interaction. Here, the Lagrangian of the bosons contains two scalar fields A and B, and the Lagrangian of the fermions contains a spinal field psi and the interaction is between the spinal field and the scalar field. And uh, supersymmetry implies that the couplings of the bosons, the couplings of the fermions, and the couplings of the bosons of the fermions, they're all given by one single constant G. So that's the main point, point about uh, supersymmetry, is that uh, uh, the Lagrangian is given just by one single coupling constant for bosons, for boson fermions, and so on and so forth. And the consequence of gauge supersymmetry is that each bosonic field there, there will correspond to a fermionic field. So for example, corresponding to the gluons, there will be gluinos, and so on. To the corresponding to the photon, there will be photinos, and, and so on and so forth. But what I want to spend a few minutes uh, uh, to, the, uh, to mention to you is uh, dynamic supersymmetry. Uh, so, this is a case in which the Hamiltonian is written in terms of uh, bosons fermion interactions, uh, and this Hamiltonian is invariant at the boson fermion transformations. Here, in this particular aspect, I'm very glad that I've been helped a lot uh, in this journey by all the people here, especially especially Rulo Baga, but I'm taking Rulo here, Alejandro Frank. So, this has been, uh, been a real uh, important and uh, collective uh, uh, study, and, uh, and uh, uh, the first example was 
of this uh, uh, group uh, U6 uh, omega. And as I said, a uh, consequence of dynamic supersymmetry is that of all properties of mixed systems of bosons and fermions can be calculated in split analytic form. And here is one of the first examples of this in the spectra of osmium and iridium, uh, uh, which, uh, which are the uh, even and odd partners of this. Uh, of this uh. Dynamic supersymmetry, which was uh, found in the, in the 1980s, has been confirmed recently in a series of experiments involving uh, several numbers, especially uh, this experiment done at, in Munich, uh, Germany, uh, which have shown the supersymmetric partners uh, in the, the all of the nuclei and uh, provided probably what is at the moment the only, uh, the only experimentally confirmed example of supersymmetry in uh, physics. So this uh, plays a very important role in general and uh, I am uh, very, very happy that uh, this has happened and uh, I was hoping to have some uh, uh, talks here. There was a, a poster uh, there, but uh, and this is an aspect uh, which is uh, absolutely important for that. So I'm coming to the conclusion because I don't want to come over time. So, so the main conclusion is that symmetry, which many people have associated with beauty, uh, Herman Weil and so on, Dirac and so on, in its final form has become a guiding principle now in the description of physics. Uh, in fact, Dirac said, if it is beautiful, it must be true. So, uh, so this identification, which may or not be uh, uh, completely appropriate, but nonetheless is something which is, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, there. Um, so, so essentially what we have done is we've changed the way in which we look at symmetries. At the beginning, uh, symmetry was just an observation. If you saw a system which was a rotation of invariant, that's it. But now symmetry has become a guiding principle in constructing theories, models of, uh, of nature. So the 20th century has seen uh, the development of, uh, of uh, space time and gauge symmetry as a tool to uh, level the fundamental laws of physics. But also, and this is the aspect where we have been most involved is uh, see the emergence of dynamic symmetry and supersymmetry as a way to classify the structure of physical systems. And the 20th century has also seen the development of new mathematical tools that need to describe symmetries and supersymmetry, in particular uh, the development of, uh, of uh, uh, Lie algebras and groups, which were started um, essentially with Cartan at the end of uh, the 19th century, the beginning of the 20th century, and then the greater the groups, which here Baca is uh, is uh, one of the models with these bars and so on. Uh, so they see the development of new mathematical tools needed to describe symmetries and supersymmetry. And I wanted to remind you the phrase of Galileo, the, the phrase of Galileo that the book of nature is written in the language of uh, mathematics. Now we are at the end of the 20th century, the beginning of the 21st century. So what are we go where are we going to? So in the 21st century, what is happening is that the complexity of the problems that we are studying has increased. So my uh, uh, su suggestion is that the more complicated the system, the more interesting is the use of symmetry. Because if you have an extremely complicated system, it's very difficult to understand what is going on. I know that there is a tendency to say that you put it into a computer and the computer tells you the, the answer. But as uh, Bickner, Eugene Bickner uh, once told me, yeah, it is good that the computer knows the answer, but I want to know the answer. And I want to find the answer just with a piece of paper and a pencil, not with a uh, with, uh, very complicated calculation. So, uh, uh, one of the lessons that we've learned is that the more complex the structure, the more useful is the concept of symmetry. And just to look at this figure from Asia. So we started from the regular polyhedra, like tetrahedra. Now suppose that we have this tetrahedra interweaved together into five, uh, 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 with uh, five of them put together 
into a figure with weight divergences, uh, which are those of a regular dodecahedron, unless you understand what are the symmetry of the system, you will have a hard time to, to figure out what, what it is. So, concluding this talk, I am looking forward to many, many more years of application of symmetry concept to physics and to development of uh, beautiful uh, models uh, based on uh, this uh, concept. And my last word uh, that uh, I would like to thank all of you uh, who have contributed to the study of symmetry in science for your contributions. I mentioned here only a couple of things, but uh, there are many new things which are going on, partial dynamic symmetries, critical supersymmetry, critical symmetry, symmetry in multi-fluid systems, uh, rotor junction symmetries, a couple of the wider models. These have been truly a uh, collective and uh, truly collective endowment, and without you, this would not have been possible. And finally, I cannot end this without thanking Rulof and Alejandro for organizing this uh, uh, beautiful, uh, <laughs> this uh, beautiful uh, workshops where many of the developments of symmetry considerations in uh, in uh, uh, physics have uh, uh, been presented. So I would like that you join me in uh, thanking uh, Rulof and uh, Alejandro for what they've done.